Oh, you hear that? Are you losing your sense when it comes to direction of AC problems? Well, let me tell you, in this video I want to talk to you about easy steps to solve that mystery and we're going to cover it now. All joking aside, there's five major components in an AC system. That's the AC compressor, condenser, evaporator, receiver dryer, expansion valve, or orifice tube. Some cars have just one, never have both. So you'll either have an expansion valve or an orifice tube. And then of course you get your lines. But the major components are those that I listed. And don't forget to check out 1A Auto for all your AC needs. And with no further delay, let's get into it. So the first thing we have the most important part is the AC compressor, and that is down here. It's driven by a drive belt that goes around and obviously drives on this particular car. One belt drives it all, power steering and everything. But there's the AC compressor down below. Then you have your two lines coming off it. You have a high side and a low side, which is liquid and vapor. Then they come up and they'll go into this over here, which is a receiver dryer, which in that canister on the bottom is that, remember that salt stuff you get in shoe boxes or anything, little packets? That's what's at the bottom of that to suck the moisture out of the Freon so it doesn't seize up the pump and cause havoc. So then the lines go over into the firewall. And right there with that, you got the low side and the high side, and that block, that bolts right to the evaporator, which is like a little mini heater core inside. And in between the two, because this is a Chrysler, they use an expansion valve, which is an indicator to tell whether you have high pressure or low pressure, and it will shut the compressor off. And then right out front, we have the old princess, the condenser. This is where all the elements do the damage. So when it comes to AC work, the first thing you would need to know is that it is really important to have one of these machines. Now, I don't expect everyone to run out and buy one. There's several thousand dollars. But your local garage that you have a relationship with, hopefully, they have one, and they can evaporate your system for you. Once they take the Freon out, bring the car home. Say, hey, listen, I'll pay you for the service. Just evaporate it and I'm gonna go look at my car myself. Cause you're all DIYers and that's what you're there for. Do it yourself, but you can't take that Freon out. Don't go in the environment. Government doesn't like that so much. The best thing you need is a headset. Now you can get just the headset without the big machine, around 50, 60 bucks. Hook it up and run your car. Now don't add Freon, those single cans. That's not the proper way to do it. That's if you're going from here to the salvage yard. Don't do that. It's not good for you or your car. So get a headset if you want to, to diagnose it yourself and go from there. You have your high side and your low side on the gauges. And they tell a lot of stories of what is going on in that AC system. So I want to show you a quick example of how a headset on an AC machine works. So you can just have the headset by itself, but how to read the gauges. So the blue is the low side and the red is the high side. Now the low side, we've got plenty of Freon in it. It's full. And you can see it stays steady because the AC is not on. When I turn the AC and that compressor turns on, you're going to watch that low side gauge drop and the high side gauge is going to go up. And that's where the pressure comes from. So let's do it. Let's put it to the cold. I'm going to turn the fan on too. I've got it on vents. I'm going to go to max AC and I'm going to hit that button. And there it goes. Watch that low side go down and the high side just starts to go up a little bit on those gauges. Now, if this guy had a problem with this car, where it was AC was turning on and then turning off or turning on and then turning hot after, after it was cold for a little bit, that high side would be shooting all the way up to 300, 350. And that's not the way it's supposed to do. Now the clutch just disengaged in the AC compressor and you'll watch the cold low side go back up and the high side will go down. And then every time that AC gauge clutch engages, you'll watch the gauges go the opposite way. That's called cycling. It's cycling the Freon. So one of the first problems I'm always asked is, geez, my AC is working great, worked great, no problem. And it doesn't matter where you live, west, east, north, south, you're gonna have this issue. And it comes down to your AC, you know it's fully charged, maybe you've had it down or your car's only three years old. And AC works great and then after like 10 minutes, it's warm, it starts to blow warm. AC compressor, you come out and look, and it stops circulating, it's not doing anything. You're like, come on, I know it's got Freon in it because it was cold. You can't go cold to hot and then cold to hot if you have no Freon. If you have Freon in the system, it's working. It's not leaking, it's fine. But what the easiest thing to do is this AC condenser right here. So this is the AC condenser and this is where basically all the Freon sits and has a beautiful day. It's just hanging out and it's doing its job, it's chilling. So 
in these little fins, those are the cooling fins. And as you can see, it picks up everything that comes down the road from sand, dirt, bugs, and that clogs it, it stops it from cooling. So when you have that headset on and you turn your AC on and the gauges are doing the thing, when the AC compressor clicks on, you can physically watch it, the high side will go right up and the low side will drop. And that's the cycling of the system. If it goes past 300, 325, and it keeps climbing up, boy, oh, well, that's wrong. That's bad, bad news. Take a monthly, weekly, all depends on where you live, dirt roads are a criminal. Take your garden hose and spray this. Don't do a power washer. I think it's too much power for the aluminum. You actually could bend the fibers inside. So just a nice garden hose and get all that dirt out. Now, if you actually have the headset set up while you're doing that, you're going to watch that high side go down. The key is, once you're done rinsing, let it stay down. If it starts to climb again, you're just temporarily cooling it down. You have another problem. But if it stays down and that system goes away of the hot and cold, hot and cold, well, you just saved yourself several hundred dollars. Because if this gets hot, it's going to break down the compressor. Compressor breaks down, it's a basket of issues. You can't just replace a compressor. That is where the most common mistakes are made. People just put compressors in when they stop working. The clutches rattle, something goes wrong. Nowadays, you can't just replace the clutches. It's just economically not worth it because the compressor with new clutches is cheaper than doing the labor in the clutches. That's the old school way. Nowadays, we put a whole new compressor in. But if you just put a new compressor in, you're gonna have another problem because you didn't flush the system. And you cannot flush an AC condenser. I'll go to bat with that every day with someone. The fins, the holes in there are so minute and small that any particles will block it. And then you only have a partial condenser and it causes the system to overheat again, which gives you AC compressor damage. So if you do a compressor, make sure you flush the system out and put a new AC condenser with a receiver dryer. That needs to be changed actually every three to five years because of that little salt mechanism in there. It gets moisture in it and it's done its life. It's done its job. Replace it. These are all maintenance things you can do, but don't forget, go to your local garage, have them evaporate the system and you do the work yourself. So another thing that will contribute to the AC going from cold to warm and then not turning back to cold is these, the AC and the heater fan. So you've got the AC fan and the coolant fan. That cools the coolant in the antifreeze, and that cools the freon down so that it doesn't heat up. And what happens is, if that AC fan does not turn on when you hit that AC button, it's not working right. And that contributes to the AC overheating inside that condenser. It needs that fan to cool down so that it stays chill for you. So that concludes our video on simple steps to learn and understand your AC with little symptoms here and there. So. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. Don't forget to ring that bell because then it turns on all your notifications and won't miss any of our future videos. And the repair on this one's done and she blows nice and cold. Oh, did you hear that? Ah, no coins down there. You know why? Because we did it ourselves and saved tons of money.